last weekend. You saw he left the stadium wearing a protective boot. How is he? Uh, he hasn't trained this week. We don't think the injury is serious. Um, they're very hopeful he can be back sooner rather than later. Do you have a, a, an idea when he might be able to train again? Not no, not, not at this moment. Slightly unclear. And you didn't have Alexander Isak in the, uh, the draw with Luton. Um, what are the chances of him being available this weekend? No, Alex won't make this game. Um, we hope he won't be too far away um, for, the, for the following games. But he doesn't have a fixed return date yet. Uh, but he's making good progress. The injury isn't um, as serious as first feared. And how close are some of your other injured players, particularly the likes of Joe Willock and Elliot Anderson? Um, yeah, they're, they're doing well at this moment in time. So Joe's um, working really hard. He, again, he's not trained with the group yet, but he's working really hard with the sports science team. Um, yeah, he's in that final stage of his of his rehab, we hope that he can be back pretty soon. Uh, Elliot's not far away either. Um, again, he's had good news on his scan a while ago and he's now really kicked up his, his running. So, uh, yeah, both players are getting closer. I just want to go back to something um, that happened in the match last week because you made a, a change at 4-2 down and Dan Byrne came off and Timo Livermento came on. Um, some fans at that point have been chanting for Livermento's introduction and there's been a bit of criticism of Byrne's performance and the decision to leave him on and to play him at the weekend during the week. Um, just in defence of Dan Byrne, really, because any player can make a mistake or have a, a bad game, but it does feel like there's been quite a, a lot of um, attention on him in particular. What would you, what would your reaction to all that be? Yeah, I mean, I understand that that happens and that's, that's football. Everyone has an, an opinion. I think Dan is such a, has been such a big player for us in, in loads of different ways. And I tried to say that after the game. Uh, he's pivotal to how we, we play really in lots of different ways without giving too many um, tactical uh, things away. Um, and that's why he was such a big miss when we, when we lost him through injury. Um, he's also a huge leader of the group, a very big presence, but obviously physically, but also vocally. And that leadership can't be underestimated. He's been an incredible signing for me, um, much better than I could have hoped really in a sense that when we brought him in we were in a, a dire situation and he was one of the players that helped galvanise the group and he's still doing that on a daily basis so yeah I can't speak highly enough of him that doesn't guarantee him a place in the team of course um, but it's just to understand his qualities he's been a huge player for us. But I'm sure you can understand as well why many fans are keen to see more of Timo Livermento because when you have played him this season he's been excellent hasn't he? Uh, he's an outstanding player and that's why I fought so hard to, to sign him. Um, a real talent, athletically very good. Of course, his best years are ahead of him. Um, no, I, I'm the biggest fan of Tino that there can be. His challenge is, he's, of course, his primary position is a right back and he's fighting with Kieran, who's, um, we've spoke at length about how Kieran's qualities and what he brings to the team. Um, but he will no doubt get his time and he will play, lo hopefully, a lot of games for this football club and will be a an outstanding player. I, d I do love him at left back as well. I think he's done extremely well there when you consider that's not his strongest side. I think he's been incredible in that position as well. Bruno Guimaraes is one booking away from an automatic two match ban. He's got to get through another nine Premier League games without receiving another caution to avoid a, a suspension. Um, <coughs> but it doesn't really seem to be holding him back, does it? He seems to just be playing on the edge and playing like he like he always does, even though that's that's looming. Yeah, I think he um, he has to play in that line. I think it, he is a type of player that has to be emotional, uh, committed to, to produce his best performance. I think he'd be frustrated with some of the bookings he's picked up this year, but um, that, that's all part of the learning process. Yes, he's in a, a dangerous place for us. We, we don't want to lose him. We're desperate for him to stay available. Um, so hopefully he can keep his emotions and uh, under control and we can get through this period. Um, he's such a vital player as you saw with a couple of the bits he did towards the end of the Luton game, his cross for Kieran's goal and um, his cross for Jacob's chance at the end was an uh, incredible bit of play. And you met Nottingham Forest at St James's Park on Boxing Day and every match is different but this weekend how do you ensure that this one doesn't go the way the last one did? Yeah it was a game that got away from us which when we went 1-0 up, you, you didn't really see coming because I thought we'd started the game really well. And I actually think, again, through lots of that game, we were we were pretty good. 
but we got some key details wrong. We conceded some poor goals, which is something we have to improve on. Um, overall, it was a disappointing day, which promised so much. Uh, and of course, there's lots of things we can take from that game into this one. And Chris Wood scored a, a hat trick in that match. He wasn't the only Forest player that performed well, but he's not going to be available this weekend because he's injured. So I suppose, given what he did to you last time, you'll be, be pleased not to come up against the player that you signed and that you know so well. Yeah, Chris on the day did, did very, very well and it was no surprise to us because we knew his qualities. Um, he was a brilliant signing for us to help keep us in the division when we were, as I said earlier, in a difficult situation. Um, but yeah, we'd be pleased to be missing. Thanks. Thank you very much. Keith? Eddie, with Isak and, and Gordon both missing, is, is Callum Wilson ready to come in and start? He's trained well this week. We've been really pleased with him. Um, I thought he did well last week in a 45-minute cameo. Um, prior to that game, he hadn't really trained a great deal with the team, so he was, again, thrust back into action, really. But looks good, um, getting his sharpness back, and he's had a good week in front of goal, so, yeah, I'd say he is. And what does it say about Harvey Barnes that he can be missing for a number of months, come back in, make an introduction like that, score a goal, and it looked like he gave the whole the whole team, team a lift. What does it say about what he's done behind the scenes to get himself in that position? Yeah, he's worked incredibly hard. It's been frustrating for him, and I, I know he's had that frustration internally for a long time where he just didn't feel right. Um, he was working hard and um, just still feeling some sensations in his foot. But uh, he saw his quality. I mean, what a finish that was on his wrong side from that distance. He only had a really small part of the goal to, to aim on. And, it, and yeah, he finished it brilliantly. And I think in that moment sort of summed up what we've missed um, from potential substitutes when you're struggling in the game and you need to change the flow of the game, the momentum. We haven't had those options for a number of weeks and it was a big moment for us. On, on Dan Byrne, you said just a, a moment ago that his signing was better than you could have envisaged when you when you arrived at the club. Where is he? And where would you rank him in terms of the, the, the best signings that you've made? Is he, is he one of your best? Yeah, I think he has to be without me sitting there ranking them, which would be an absolute waste of time. Um, yeah, he has to be right up there because... Uh, in that, as you say, you have to put yourself, you, you can't look at yourself when you're in this moment now, you have to take yourself back to where we were. It was a very difficult window, it was a very difficult um, market to sign players in. Um, attracting players to come to us was incredibly tough. So we only wanted to sign players that actually wanted to come. Dan was one of those players that was desperate to play for Newcastle and um, he's never lost that love and enthusiasm for the club. He's still absolutely Newcastle through and through. Finally from me, um some some guidance from from IFAB that they're going to potentially introduce a a blue card for footballers for <coughs> dissent and, and cynical fouls. Can I get your take on that? Yeah, I'm not a big fan, to be honest. I, I think that's what yellow cards are for. Uh, I think the, the current system works well. It's just got to be applied right. Um, I think adding a blue card would just add more confusion, just in my opinion. So I'm I'm against it. Okay. Thanks, Eddie. Morning, Eddie. Uh, Callum Wilson said after the, the Luton game that it was difficult to analyse. So how many times have you kind of watched <laughs> it back and how difficult was it to analyse? Well, yeah, it wasn't difficult to analyse, but it, it was just a crazy game. It was one of those games that um, you're scratching your head a little bit for, for the actual what you've seen because it's not necessarily what you prepared for. I have to give Luton credit for how they attacked the game and how they approached the game and how they delivered what they delivered. Um, but then you have to look at us and you go at 1-0 up, at 2-1 up. I think, those, I think those were the key moments in our performance that needed to be better. Um, we just lost our authority in the game in those key moments and let them back in. And uh, then you have to say at 4-2, what a response from the team. Because it was very easy in that moment to go under. Uh, the players were strong and um, showed really good qualities to then get a point. And then at 4 all. Again, I'm a little bit disappointed with how we've attacked the last 15 minutes because I think the game was there for us to win. Obviously, the talk was all about the away form before. Then came the performances, the results against Fulham and Aston Villa. Now it's about the home form. How is How much is the inconsistency frustrating you at the moment? Yeah, it's been one of those seasons where every time we've... <laughs> regarding injuries and results, and every time you think, right, OK, that's there, and then something else happens... Um, so, yeah, our home form and away forms are difficult. I never felt we had an away form problem because our cup form had been very strong and the Premier League and the cup games, there's no difference between them, the high-quality games. So I never felt that was an issue. 
Um, and hopefully we're on our way to proving that nothing's nothing's decided. We have to continue to demonstrate that. I also don't believe we have an, a, a problem at home. I think maybe a, um, a couple of um, scars have developed and we need to wipe them away uh, because no one's going to give you anything in this in this league. Um, our home form has been such a formidable thing because of our supporters, because of our attitude to the game and everyone's worked as a team. We've got to make sure we don't lose that. Just one other thing from the weekend in football as a general, uh, this issue of over-celebrating uh, reared its ugly head again. I just wondered what your kind of take on that take is in terms of players, managers, fans celebrating in football. I think it's all personal. Uh, I'd never put judgment over any other team, individual. How can you? Um, it's not my right. We will celebrate as we see accordingly, in tune with our emotions and our feeling towards the game. As I think as long as it's not disrespectful to an opponent, I think you can do what you want. Just uh, on Joe Willock, how vital do you think he's going to be eventually when he does make his way back into the starting eleven and to the match day squad in terms of that athleticism that he brings to the midfield now? Yeah, he's a massive player for us because, as you say, he does have that athleticism. He does have the ability to score goals. He's a driving force from midfield. I think we've really missed him. We've really missed Joe Linton, but we've really missed all our injured players because they're because of their qualities they bring. Everyone's different and individual. Um, but I think when you look at our midfield last year, we had a really good balance in there. Now, I, I keep repeating myself. That's not a criticism of of Louis, of Sean, of Bruno, who are our current midfielders because they've all individually had very good seasons. Um, but you're going to miss quality players like um, like Joe and Joe Linton. Just finally, uh, on Forest Boxing Day result, you mentioned it to Reyes before, but was that one of the, not the most difficult, but probably one of the lowest points of the season in terms of being at home, Boxing Day being a big event and everything like that? Yeah, I think that any defeat at home hurts. Hurts, hurts badly, depending on how, how you lose. And I felt that day we were at 1-0 up. Again, the, the game was there for us. We just needed to put our foot on the floor and um, keep attacking the game, keep doing what we were doing in that moment. But we didn't, and um, you know Nottingham Forest from their side played well, um, but we didn't deal with their threats well enough. Alistair, it feels like uh, every time you get a player back, you lose another one to injury. Can you put that down to anything, or is it just misfortune this season that, that won't go away? Well, I think every injury you, you have to analyse. Um, that injury itself, I don't think you could group them together. Um, but the the unfortunate sequences for us is we've never been in a position where we can have the strength to rotate players, rest players. As you say, due to the uncir unfortunate circumstances of almost one in, one out. And it's just hampered our ability to protect players that might be more uh, at risk than others. But yeah, we just have to get on with it. I think you've um, conceded more goals this season in the league than all of last season. Is that, do you put that down to the injuries and the extra games or was there anything else going on, do you think? I think it's a combination of lots of things. I, d I don't think it's one thing. Uh, certainly the injuries wouldn't have helped. Um, the inability to make substitutions to attacking players who are fatigued. Like there's, there's lots of build-up. Of course, ultimately you have to take or I have to take responsibility for for everything that happens. So that's a negative for us. Our defensive record this year compared to last year has not been at the same level. And of course, I have to look at why. Keith mentioned the blue card thing. Are there any innovations from the last few years that you'd, that you'd like to, would like to see got rid of? Obviously, VAR is the big one. You've seen extra minutes in, in stoppage time, extra substitutions. Any favorites, any dislikes? I think the extra substitutions from a manager's perspective is a good thing because um, yeah, your ability to influence the game, I think, increases. I've got to say, there's not many I've been a massive fan of. I think VAR for me was a no when it first came in. Um, I preferred the power of the referee. And yes, there was some right and some wrong, but ultimately I, I believed that was the right way to go. And I think VAR's not, not been maybe the success that uh, everyone hoped it would be. But... I'm still go with it in, in the hope that we find a better way of working. Um, now it's in, I don't think it will go away. So you have to accept that. But I don't think there was too much wrong with the game. 
in, in the first place to keep to keep chopping and changing things. All right, thank you. Simon at the back. Mm -hmm. So showing it earlier, if you didn't laugh, you'd cry. It's felt this season as if there hasn't really been a week you're not dealing with an injury or an issue. So how much of a driving force <coughs> is it for everyone to know that despite all that, there's still so much you can achieve this season? Yeah, I think that there's very much two ways of looking at this season, depending on your your vantage point. Really, there's we've had a really challenging season, but we're still we're still in there fighting. We're still in there giving everything we can to have a successful conclusion to the season. Or you can say it's been a disappointing season and and almost move on to the next one. We're certainly not in that camp. We're absolutely committed to um, getting our Premier League form back in a consistent uh, vein of form. We're still very committed to finishing as high as we can in the league. We're desperate to do well. I see that in the players every day. I see their commitment to what they're doing. And the FA Cup is still a realistic target for us. We have a tough draw in the next game, but I, I believe we can um, hopefully do really well in that competition. So still lots to be positive about. Um, when the dust settles, whatever happens, do you think yourself, the squad, perhaps even the football club as a whole, it, it might be a character building experience this season? Yeah, certainly a character building experience, but I think you're absolutely right. I think the club, myself, the players, everyone will have learnt so much from this year. Not that that's necessarily what you're in it for, but I think from every experience you have, you have to grow from it, especially if it's negative. You have to grow and you have to improve and you have to learn how to fix problems. So we're certainly, with everything that we face this year, I think finding a way to hopefully improve the inner workings of the football club. Thanks, broadcasters. Uh, Damien, Chris and then Lee. Eddie, just going back to Rez's question about Dan Byrne, with, with the way you want to play and the intensity you want to play with, is, is there a fine balance that has to be struck throughout the team for everything to be in, in sync? Yeah, I think we are, because we're um, the way that we play is intricate, it's detailed, then I think you need that continuity. That's not to say that, again, that you play the same team um, every week, regardless of form, that's absolutely not the case. Everyone has to earn their place in the team. But um, I think it helps, and I think we were at our best last year when we had quite a solid team and we weren't chopping and changing players um, because the relationships in the team and the dynamic of how we play is based on everyone understanding their role. Um, but the way that we train helps that. So the way that we train players that aren't playing are still getting the same work. But um, certainly I think that's been affected by what's happened this year. And just on the IFAB proposals and the Simbin element of it, what sort of impact do you think that might have on the, on the game? Some critics have suggested that teams will put 10 men behind the ball and that might sort of affect the game. Yeah, I think it it will change it a lot, but I, again, not not for me in a good way because I think it will make it very bitty, very more stop start. Uh, I fear for the players who have to come on, go off for ten minutes and then refine the rhythm of a Premier League game after ten minutes out. I'm just not sure it works personally. Chris, more Eddie, you've mentioned the dynamic of the midfield and a certain element of your team. You said after the Luton game that maybe with the personnel you've got you might need to adapt. I mean, now, having had a few days longer to think of that, is that still your view and what does that actually mean? Does that mean you might change system, personnel? Or what are you thinking going forward? Thinking lots of things. I'm thinking things every day. Uh, ultimately, you'll have to wait and see you know, what tomorrow brings. But yeah, but we're always thinking, how can we improve? And if that is a change of system or a change of personnel, then we'll look to do that. But um, yeah, I think we have to remember also that the last few games hasn't been that bad. You know. We drew a game against Luton, yes, but then prior to that we beat Aston Villa and um, Fulham in the, the FA Cup, so narrowly lost to Manchester City, beat Sunderland. So our, our form actually in the last few games has been pretty good and I don't think that should be forgotten. I know you went to Forest last season and, and you came from behind to, to win the game as well. I mean, how, how big a moment was that then and how can you use that? Yeah, it was a big moment then. We, I think we knew the importance of that game. Um, we went 1-0 down, uh, responded really well and it was a... A really good second half performance. Our biggest memory of that game is Elliot's goal getting disallowed for a reason that we couldn't work out at the time. And then Alex showed real class for his penalty at the end of the game. So a, a really good night. I, I don't know if we can take too much from that to this because I think they're very different. We're very different. Um, but certainly we left that night with a good feeling from the ground. Thanks, Chris. Lee Wyatt. Um, 
Eddie, last, last season, uh, I think the fans even made a banner of the back four, which obviously had Dan Byrne in it. Uh, does part of you like see that as kind of a, a favoured lineup and you keep going back to it, or is it about getting your place on merit? Nah, it's always about on merit. There's there's nothing, there's nothing uh, that no part of me gives a starting berth to a player based on what they did last year. That would be ridiculous. Um, it has to be based on what I see every day in training and, of course, taking into account the games. Um, you have to remember Dan had a, uh, broke his back not so long ago, um, came back early for the benefit of the team. And we were only too keen to welcome him back because we'd missed his, um, his presence in the team. Um, so, yeah, he's earned his place back. Yeah, two games ago, he scored against... Or oh, three games ago, he scored against Fulham and against Aston Villa, he got main man of the match. So, I think, uh, as always in football, you're judged on the last few seconds, and that's always how it will be, and that's how it has to be. And um, yeah, that's my thoughts on it. And how much do you think Joe Linton has, has been a, a miss because he did such a good job for you on that side and takes away a big layer of solid, solidarity? On that yeah, I think that's a really good point. So Joe Linton playing on that left hand side. Almost at times played like two men, you know, off the ball. So, so strong, covered the ground really well, doubles up with his fullbacks really well, covers covers space excellently. So I think we we've missed his presence in midfield, regardless of where he plays. I think we've missed his pl presence and his physicality. Um, but of course, we've had, just had to adapt. And it's the same with Joe Willock. We've missed his legs in midfield, but we have to adapt. Um, and those players in midfield, as I keep saying, individually have played very very well. I mean, Louis Miley, again, uh, probably didn't highlight it enough after the game, but he moved to the sixth position late in the game and w was absolutely outstanding uh, and showed maturity beyond his years. So his performances, Sean scored two goals. You know, midfield's functioning individually very well. And you mentioned Lewis there. And you've also got um, Travis, the young Norwegian. Um, he's been training with you. How good is it to have sort of that younger players around to give the group energy at this key part of the season? Yeah, those young lads, I mean, we've had a lot of them training with us because of numbers. You know, we, we've been really short on numbers at times. We've had 13, 14 senior professionals then made up with, the rest made up. We like to train with 20 players, with players from uh, the academy. And that's been great for them, great experiences. They've come over, they've done very well. Um, and as you say, they bring that youthfulness, that energy, that enthusiasm. Um, and that certainly helped our training sessions. Craig, Jordan and Scott. Morning, Eddie. Morning. It's a, it's a recurring theme, but the midfield, you can have to go with the same midfield three again tomorrow, it looks like. <coughs> Has that had the biggest impact on your season, the way the midfield has been hit? Because, you know, last year, yes, it was a back four, got a lot of praise, but they didn't have to defend as much, really, because of that midfield protection. Likewise, going forward, the impact they had on the front three. Do you think that's been the most debilitating aspect of your season? I don't ever think there's one thing, Craig. I, I don't think you can just label that that area of the pitch. I think we've missed all our injured players. We're not going to make that an excuse behind everything that you've seen. Um, I think the injuries in, in part has brought a little bit of inconsistency to our performances. Um, we haven't had our same fluency. So I think that that's a justified reason. Um, but I don't think we can look at one area of the pitch. As I said, I don't want to look at as if we're criticising Bruno, Sean and Louis, who have, for me have stepped up incredibly well. And um, yeah, I think they're all having individually very, very good seasons. So we just have to, I think, focus on the players we do have and try and find areas and ways to improve their performances that help the team. And just on Joe as well, you mentioned before, how big a miss he is. How delicate is his injury? Because it seems he's been getting close, 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 close. It's a day he hasn't trained, he's playing the stages of rehab. Just take us inside that, that, that injury where he's Well, it's an Achilles tendon injury, which, uh, of course, his initial injury was a hamstring. He recovered from that fine, but then he picked up a, an Achilles tendon injury. And I think anyone who's had those injuries know how difficult they can be to manage. So um, the medical team, the sports science team, have been building him up very gradually, and that's probably why you're saying what you're saying as in and, and I feel that as well because it's a slow process to build him up to the level where that Achilles tendon can withstand the rigours of Premier League football and I think anyone with that type of injury there's no certainty until he's back that he will be back um, but fingers crossed he will 
he's in the last stages of that that rehab and he's working very hard and doing well currently. Just very quickly, Mike, will you play in February, do you hope? I'd have to check the date as we speak. Uh, I hope so. I hope so. Hope so. Yeah, I hope so. Um, I'd probably say ideally if we had a, a fully fit squad no he wouldn't be in contention to start would be very much easing him back in um, that would be my preference and that would have been my preference for a lot of the players that we've had to put back into the team before they were ready to play we've done that a number of times but we've had no choice so um, he would fall into that bracket we'd probably want to ease him back Although you've potentially lost Anthony, do you still feel like you've got options at Iron Hour with Jacob maybe and Harvey coming back? We're certainly a lot better than we were a few weeks ago. Yeah, where we had two wide men really for a long period of time. They did really well to stay fit and contribute in the way that they did. Uh, certainly, it feels like an abundance of uh, options at the minute compared to them. And just, a, just a quick one as well, if I can check out those reports yesterday that Emil Kraft was going to sign a contract extension. Is there anything you can see on that? Um, yeah, I think that might be the case. I, I don't think, that, yeah, I think it's a consolidation of an option, yeah. Okay. Uh, Scott Wilson. Um, I think one of, the, one of the kind of things you did so well last season was um, you were very reliable against teams down at the bottom end of the table. Now, this time round, two games against Luton, Bournemouth, Forest, Everton, and I take it that the season's been different, but actually your record against the teams at the top has held up very well. Is, is there a kind of anything in that, do you think, whether it's mental, whether it's the way teams are setting up against you, anything, that, that that seems to be where the results have dropped off this term? Again, I think that's a, a very valid question. I think um, there's, there's probably a little bit in that in terms of mental. Probably the pressure into those games and the expectation is that they're, they're automatic wins and that's never the case in the Premier League. We know how difficult those games are. So I think adjusting to that new pressure because last year we didn't have that it was every win was a was a bonus really every win was was something new on the journey that we were on and that was one of the challenges going into this season the, the pressures the expectation the the start point of the season was totally different so for our players to adjust to that I think it's just something slightly new what I will say and compliment the crowd on there's never been an issue with playing in the playing conditions the players have faced there's always been Superb. So there's no excuses from our side. The crowd have backed us to the hilt, um, but we have to do better. Okay, thanks, Scott. Uh, Louise, then uh, Luke, then Dominic. Mike, now, um, last weekend was this green football weekend, which seems a bit of a buffalo sham in terms of the away supporters and, and your fixtures. But in, in terms of there's a lot of focus on teams flying everywhere. Now, logistically, I think Newcastle have to, and there's no real options, no alternatives, but I just wondered what your views on it were. Is it something that concerns you? I mean, you've got three young boys that are probably having a lot of it at school and everything. And how can football change? How far is it possible to change? Yeah, I think we, I think we can do more. I think football can do more, definitely. I mean, the flying debate, how you travel to games, I'll leave that to someone else to, to, to figure that one out. But I, I do think it needs consideration and it needs thought. I think certainly around the training ground, I will I will push, and I know the club are pushing to try and do everything in a better way, a more economical way, and to, to say food wastage and recycle more and everything we can do to protect the planet is uh, certainly in our thoughts. I mean, when Mike Ashley was here, he installed a well apparently a borehole at the training ground, which I think was more about saving money than the uh, <laughs> stuff. We still have that. Sort of I got no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you had a, a change of, of head physio very recently. How, what, what change has that had in terms of injury management, if any? Yeah, we're, we're always trying to find ways to um, improve what we do. Um, and that, that process will never change. So whether that's playing style, playing staff, we're always trying to move the club forward and um, it's with that in mind. Thanks, Louise. Luke? Um, on injuries, you can't have another season like this in terms of so many players being out for so long, can you? No, hopefully not, Luke. I think um, we went into this season with the squad built to um, deal with the demands that we were going to face, with all the competitions that we were going to be in. Unfortunately for us, it's well, we hope it's been a, a, a one-off season where we've had not just injuries, but the length of 
time those injuries have taken. I think that's been the absolute uh, most difficult thing for us to deal with. You can handle one or two, three week injuries. Um, what you can't handle is three, four months, and it's been three, four months, five, six, seven, eight players, and it's then there's no light at the end of the tunnel. Then your squad stretched, and then you're going to get more injuries because your squad is stretched. Um, certainly, we've made mistakes. Um, certainly, we could do things better. Um, and then you add Sandro's situation on top of that, which is in an, in an area of the team where we couldn't afford that to happen. We lost him as well. So it's been one of those seasons where everything's gone against us. There is a phrase that's been used about Newcastle, I think, by quite a lot of people, that this season's been a reality check uh, after the thrills of, and the, the brilliance of last season. How do you respond to a phrase like that? Does it have negative connotations for you? Yeah, I don't see it so much as a reality check because that makes it sound like you're... You're thinking you're you're something when you're not. We never thought we were anything. We knew that we were on a journey to becoming a team that hopefully could compete for trophies and sustain a, uh, an assault on the top uh, areas of the Premier League. But that's that's a longer term vision for where the reality was where we started in the relegation zone in the Premier League not so long ago. So we're 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 building and we're building the club. Also, from the inside, you don't, you don't just become a Champions League team from a relegation team in two minutes. So I disagree with that quote because, it, as I said, it, it leads to people thinking that we were way ahead of where we were. Do you think you're on, with that and I following up from that, do you think you're still on the right tra trajectory as a football club and that you will get to where you want to be in three, four, five years' time? I think we're on our way. I, I, I think, we're, as I said, alluding to the previous we're trying to improve everything internally as well as I said you, you don't just get there you have to you have to build and that takes time whether that's member of staff infrastructure the training ground lo loads of things that we're trying to catch up really with the speed of the team financial fair play is going to limit our speed on the pitch so you say three four years I think that, that may take longer than that to, to be the team that everyone wants us to be. Um, so, yeah, that's what I think. Thank you. Dominic, um, Nottingham Forest played 120 minutes in midweek. Given you've often been on the opposite side of that this season, is that something you feel you can capitalise on tomorrow night? Yeah, having experienced both sides of that, I don't think it has any relevance on the game whatsoever. So we've been the team that's, as you said, played a game in midweek and then we've there's games where we've performed really well at the weekend. There's games where we maybe haven't performed so well, um, but I don't think it has any relevance on, on what's going to happen. And just on the left back position, Dan Byrne, you initially signed, played centre back. Tino Livermento signed as a right back, as you say. Do you feel you have a natural left back option available at the moment with Matt Target obviously out injured? Or who do you feel is your most natural option? Well, na natural left back at the moment is Dan because he's left footed, but Tino's played. I, I, I'm not fixated with those words really. Tino's played very well at left back this season. Um, Lewis Hall's played left back and done very well in that position. Uh, and he's continuing to improve. Um, Paul Dummett's played left back. We have an abundance. Alex Murphy's a really ta talented young player coming through, can play left back. So I think we have an abundance of options. And of course, Matt, we've missed because of his experience in that position. Keelan, um, you've had a lot of freak injuries, but have you reviewed things behind the scenes and, and found anything that could maybe help you go into next season as well? Of course, we're always looking at um, areas that we can improve and reviewing every injury that we get and trying to find a reason why. Some, some injuries you can come up with a reasonable explanation as to what happened. Some you can't, uh, just freaks, uh, like Jacob's shoulder, Nick's shoulder. Nick would have done that dive hundreds and thousands of times, but that's the one time where his, his shoulder jumps out of his joint. I don't know how you can prepare for that. Um, I think there's been several other injuries where you're scratching your head to go, how did that happen? Um, but there's some. You know, you, you, always, usually, your muscle pulls where you're looking at and going, could, is there a way we, we could have avoided that? Yeah, one or two, I can think of. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Oscar, Martin and Simon to finish, please. And it's back to, back to Dan. How is he coping with the 
criticism and how you coached it and did this week must be a bit harder for him being a boyhood fan from a historical area. I think um, criticism is a strange thing, right? I'm sure I'm getting absolutely slaughtered out in the wider world at, from times in, in this job and you sort of know it's happening but you don't expose yourself to it. So I don't know what Dan is exposed to or what he's not exposed to. I don't know what's been said. I haven't got a clue. Um, and I, from my side, I, I prefer to keep myself away from it. And I'm sure Dan's the same because he's experienced. Every player in our squad will get criticised um, from time to time and they know they live in that world. So I think as long as Dan feels the love from everyone internally, um, and I'm sure the supporters value him greatly, actually. I, I think probably a lot of the noise is coming from other sources. Like, he needs to be celebrated for his career and for what he's done since he's joined the football club, not the other way around. And we will continue internally to give him as much love as possible. Do you encourage your players to stay away from that? Absolutely. Yeah, you do. And um, you mentioned to Luke um, that you're on the right path in terms of the trajectory. Just how important is seeing a European place this season in terms of... Ability to attract players, your ability to keep hold of your style of players this summer. Something we'd love would love to do. Um, yeah, I, I don't know about you know in a sense of keeping keeping players. I'd like to think that we would be in a good position to do that anyway. Um, but certainly, every motivation we have is to try and uh, finish as high as we can. Thanks, Oscar. Martin. Yeah, no, he did. That was the technical term for his injury uh, when he landed and uh, so, from so up. And he actually did it again the other day. I can't remember the game where he landed in a very similar fashion. I think it might have been Fulham. Um, and we were worried that he's going to reoccur the same, you know, the same injury was going to happen again. That's another injury you speak about. The I just don't know how you prevent that. It's a, an accidental fall. Um, but he showed tremendous courage to come back way ahead of schedule because he could see the team needed him. Um, so he's played in a, in a little bit of discomfort, I think, especially in the first couple of games. But he's um, he's got through that and now I think he's on his way to, to feeling really good again. You also have got to remember he's chipped, up, um, chipped in with some really important goals this season. Um, he's done really well from that perspective. And I, I know I said the other day how important he is from set plays and how important that phase of the game is and it's often underestimated um, that that can win and lose your games. And how has he been this week? He's been good. He's been typical Dan. He's minimal, from my side, minimal, um, takes minimal energy away from me. He's always adding energy to me. And when you have players like that, it's so important. Um, I can't highlight, again, his leadership skills are second to none. Slightly different one. The final assault that Martin Dubrovka at Chelsea um, was fined yesterday and given a three year ban in order. You were assaulted last season at Leeds. There was a referee chase to Paul Hale. Why are these things happening and what needs to be done? How did you feel last season yourself at Leeds? Yeah, it's, it's a worrying trend. I mean, seeing the referee get chased off the pitch was that, that wasn't an enjoyable experience, I'm sure, for anyone seeing that clip. That, that is a really worrying thing and that, that can't happen in the game. That has to be something we never see again. And I keep saying from my side that moment at Leeds was forgotten really quite early for me. I mean, it was a, a moment where you're thinking, you know, just trying to figure out what was going on. But I just want these moments to be used for the good of the game, to make sure they're, they're used as examples of what could happen. Because we don't want a moment where we're going, yeah, there were warning signs and we didn't do anything about it. You know, football needs to look at it and make sure that no player, referee, official is put in that position again. Simon, to finish. Yeah, you just discussed the injuries of Luke there. Um, you said we've made mistakes. So what, what do you mean by that and, and who's made them? Well, of course, when you have the number of injuries that we've had, some of those injuries are going to come from either too much load or maybe our programmes aren't good enough in the gym because the players do a lot of work. They don't just go on the training pitch. They're doing a lot of gym work. They're doing a lot of different things. Um, and if we're sitting here going, we've not made any mistakes, I think we're, we're being the fools here. So, of course, we analyse everything. And that's why when I say we, I'm, I include everybody at the football club. No, no individual, no individual department, everybody. We're all in it together. So, of course, we have to look at that and uh, respond and improve. So, so what do you want to change in, um, for next season or this season, later this season? Well, we have to improve what we deliver for the players. We have to, 
I'd be saying that even if we didn't have an injury this season because football never stands still. The demands are only going up physically. Again, you look at the demand physically this year on the Premier League, it's a lot quicker league than it was last year. That will continue to be the case. So the physical demands are getting greater. The games are getting more, especially with us this season. Then, of course, your strategies and how you treat the players behind the scenes have to improve also.